Hi, I just had one of my BM235 multimeters uh, returned from a customer saying that uh, they believe it's faulty because, um, here's a photo, they had an old multimeter measuring a uh, CAN bus and it was measuring the 60 ohm load on the CAN bus, no problems. Of course, the uh, CAN bus has a, a nominal 120 ohm load resistor on each end of the uh, bus. It's a serial uh, transfer bus, often used in uh, cars, so I believe he's using it in automotive. And he sent me photos of the BM235 not working uh, and it was showing weird values that weren't the correct 60 ohms on uh, the CAN bus. And it didn't matter whether it was on ohms range or whether or not it was in uh, continuity mode, it just measured the wrong value. Whereas his old cheapo multimeter measured precisely 60 ohms. What's going on? Now this is actually no fault of the multimeter whatsoever. In fact, uh, basically the customer got lucky with his old multimeter that it could actually measure uh, the 60 ohms on the CAN bus. So I'm going to demonstrate here. I've got a uh, demo board here which has a uh, CAN bus on it and we're measuring uh, 60 ohms here. I've, I've put the extra uh, 120 ohms like simulating the other end of the line. So we measure the 60 ohms. So why is this one working and his one didn't? Well, it's because because the CAN bus is not switched on. It's isolated. There's no electrical signals on there. The drivers uh, have been switched off. And you can see that the CAN bus is actually uh, switched off here. Okay, so there's no signals on the CAN bus. But if, it, but if I actually enable it by cycling through here, wah, look, zero ohms there. And it doesn't matter whether or not it's in ohms or continuity mode, it's measuring zero ohms, but it could actually measure anything. Let's try a few more multimeters to see if it's the 235. Got a Fluke 77, or I've modified it to a 177 here. Uh, minus, minus 305 ohms. Wah. How about the classic Fluke 87.5 here? 60 ohms. We switch the CAN bus on. Uh, minus 304. <laughs> now do you get negative ohms? Keysight U1272A, excellent multimeter. CAN bus off, 60 ohms. CAN bus on, uh, minus 208-ish. $20 cheapy, the Aning 8008, which is a pretty decent uh, meter for the price. Uh, whoop, zero, just like the BM235. Fluke 101 meter, what? Does zero, exactly the same as the BM235 again. But interestingly, watch what happens if I change the polarity here from the can, so negative is on can low and positive is on can high. It's not zero anymore, it's 21 mega ohms, 21 million ohms. What's going on? Of course, if we switch the CAN bus off, we're going to go back and we're actually going to measure our 60 ohms. No worries. Back to the BM235. Again, if we change the polarity on the uh, probes, uh, we get 34 mega ohms. And if we turn off the CAN bus, we get our <laughs> proper 60 ohms. Klein tools, MM500. Yep, overflowed. A really old Matrix MX44. Yep, 360K. <laughs> Different again. Uni T 61E, 60 ohms, and then wah, zero. 121GW, 60 ohms, and then uh, 45 kilo ohms, whatever it is. Once again, totally different. So why do we get the incorrect reading when we switch the CAN bus and measure a live circuit here? It's because, well, anyone with any decent experience of using multimeters knows that you never uh, use the ohms range to measure a live circuit. And indeed, here's the user manual for the BM235 here. It says if you use it on a live, use the ohms range on a live circuit, it may give you incorrect readings. And also it could potentially damage the meter, but most multimeters on ohms range actually have uh, like decent protection in them. In fact, you can put uh, 240 volt mains across this in ohms range and you're not going to damage it, but you're certainly not going to be able to measure anything uh, in circuit. Because ohms range works by putting a current through your resistance and back into the meter and measuring the voltage drop across it. And if your circuit is feeding in external voltages via a low impedance path, that can upset the reading and the current and your meter could measure an incorrect value. It might be slightly out, it may be way out, it may show zero that we saw, it might show negative values because the multimeter is just absolutely confused, the software doesn't know what to do and it's just putting a negative number in there even though you can't get a negative resistance. So yeah, don't use ohms range to measure your live circuit. If you do, you get what you get and you don't get upset.
So in this particular case, the customer either got really lucky with that multimeter that somehow it's not uh, disturbed at all by uh, the external voltage that happens to be here on his particular CAN bus that he's measuring, or he's measuring it with the CAN bus uh, switched off. Either one of those. But I couldn't find a single meter here in the lab that wouldn't give me an incorrect reading on this particular CAN bus. So let's get a bit more technical. If we probe across the CAN bus here with our oscilloscope, this is what we get. We get a packet of uh, data, which is basically where 500 millivolts are per division here. So it's about a two volt peak-to-peak uh, -peak signal here. And it's just, I'll stop that so you can actually see it. It's all this data in here. And well, all this stuff is being superimposed on your multimeter and your multimeter is trying to feed current through that 60 ohm resistor yet it's having this driver chip in there force all of these voltages and all this high frequency switching stuff across essentially your load resistor that you're actually trying to measure and well the multimeter does is not designed for this it's not designed to handle external voltages and currents being actually pushed in to essentially pushed into the multimeter. So it's going to really upset the apple cart. That's why you could get just any unpredictable result when you try and measure ohms on a live circuit. You don't know how your multimeter is going to react because it's not specified at all for any uh, external uh, voltages. And it's a similar reason why you don't measure resistors in circuit. Here's a 10K resistor in circuit. What does it measure? Uh, it might measure 10k, but in this case, nope, <laughs> 3.5k. It's be it's not because this board's powered up. It's not. It's switched off. But there are other components in parallel with that resistor that when this uh, multimeter drives current out here, it may go elsewhere in the circuit and not all of it goes through the resistor. So it can upset the reading. This is like using multimeter 101 stuff. Don't measure resistors in circuit. Almost any multimeter uh, manual should tell you that. Break the circuit before measuring. Same thing applies when you're measuring a powered up uh, circuit. Any external voltages can upset the apple cart. Now I won't go into major detail on the CAN bus, but it is actually a differential signal and it doesn't actually sit on zero like this. And if we actually change the polarity of our single-ended probe here, and I won't go into single-ended versus differential, look, there you go, it goes in the opposite direction. And if we don't probe across the bus and actually take it to the circuit common ground here, then we measure something different again because it's actually a biased signal. Now we're at one volts per division, so it's actually biased by one, two, two and a half volts. So there's our signal there, and we're probing the high bus and if we probe the low bus there you go it goes from two and a half volts in the negative direction so it goes positive and negative above and below two and a half volts so we've effectively got a two and a half volt offset voltage on there Here's another simple example. I've got a just a 62 ohm resistor here and I've connected across a power supply here which is switched off but it's not 62 ohms. It's already, already there's something inside there that's upsetting the apple cart, right? Even though this output is switched off because there's something across these terminals even when you switch it off that causes it to drop from its 62 ohms. So let's actually switch the output on here. I've got to set to zero volts here and it doesn't really upset it at all. But what happens if I change my voltage by 0.1, just 0.1, 100 millivolts, 0.1 volts? It's gone up to 647 ohms. What happens if I change it to 0.2 volts? Uh, 2.5k ohms. Look at this, <laughs> 4k, like 40, like 59k, right? You just have no idea, and now it's open, right? You have no idea what's going to do, what's going to happen. And if we swap the polarity of it here. Look at this, what do we get? We get that zero that we saw before, okay? And I bet you if I try this on a fluke multimeter, we might be able to get that negative we saw before. And sure enough, there it is, negative one meg at 1.2 volts there, and we switch it off, and we get, uh, once again, like that 58 ohms there. So, uh, like, come on! And we'll swap the polarity back on the fluke and see what we get here. 
Uh, there you go, 1.3 meg. So when the polarity was swapped here, it's going to show a negative, but uh, the uh, EEV log Bryman meter didn't show that. Why? Is there something wrong with the fluke? No, absolutely not. This is one of the best industry standard meters on the market. There's nothing wrong with the BM235 uh, either. There's nothing wrong with any of the multimeters uh, that we've seen. It's just when you introduce an external uh, voltage or you have something in parallel with your resistor that you're trying to measure on your ohms range, you're going to come a guts like this and, well, you can't take your reading at face value. It's absolute 101 beginner stuff when you're using a multimeter on ohms range don't have anything else in parallel with your resistor. You can try and measure resistors in circuit on an unpowered uh, circuit and occasionally you know there's often not enough things in parallel and there are some multimeters that actually have a low enough threshold voltage on them it's called a low ohms range and they actually output less than 0.6 volts on uh, the terminals here and that's not enough voltage to turn on active semiconductors within your circuit. It was very common back in the 1980s for example for multimeters to have low ohms range but uh, some multimeters will have it by default and the output voltage on here can change depending on the range that you're actually using. So what I'm doing here is I'm using the BM235 to measure the output voltage of the ohms range on this fluke here and you'll see we're 2.8 volts on the 60 mega ohms range but if I actually change that to the 600 ohms range we're 7.3 volts because this thing uses a 9 volt battery whereas you won't get those higher voltages on a multimeter that uses say two AAA b b batteries only 3 volts are maximum so we change the range again and again and look, 600k range is down at 3.5 volts, change it to 6 meg, it's back up to 5.6 volts, so it's all over the shop. So just that output voltage alone, that can actually change how you measure resistors in circuit, which is why it's not recommended to do it, because you don't know what your multimeter is outputting in voltage, it's not specified for it, it's just something that you have to be very cautious in doing and especially when you're measuring live circuits like this uh, CAN bus here that can inject voltages and currents with different impedances into your circuit that's going to screw up your multimeter you're going to come a gutsa so there you go I hope you've learned something very interesting about your multimeter and this is kind of like beginner level stuff but you usually learn it the hard way as I think this customer uh, has but anyway if you enjoyed that video please give it a big thumbs up and as always discuss down below catch you next time